Hello everybody. In today's video tutorial, we are going to have a look at linked list, the different operations performed in linked list, and the step-by-step -step description of how each operation is performed. So this is going to be the outline of this presentation or the video tutorial. We first start off with an introduction to linked list, then we follow it by in the insertion description, the deletion description, and the basic node implementation, and then we finally conclude the topic. So let us begin by understanding what exactly is a linked list. So over here what you're going to have a look at is linked list and its difference between a and the difference between lists and arrays. Then we understand by what are singly linked lists, doubly linked lists, what are circular lists and the advantages of lists. So to start off with what is a list, let us have a look at this simple diagram which will explain clearly what exactly a list is. As you can see in this diag diagram, a list is nothing but a collection of nodes. It can be n number of nodes or it can be just one node. So as soon as you have at least one node, you have a list formed in your memory. So if you look at the structure of a node, you can see there are two parts in it. You can see that there's a data part and the next part is a pointer which will point to either null as you can see over here or will point to the next available node in the list. And this is the point, this is the part which establishes the connection between the various nodes in a linked list. So what do you mean by a singly linked list? As you can see in this diagram, a singly linked list is nothing, by a nothing but a simple list wherein you have one node connecting to the other node and finally the last node points to nothing or points to null. This is what we call a list or a singly linked list. Now what do you mean by doubly linked list? In doubly linked list, the node structure is slightly different. There's an extra field in it or an extra component. There are three parts in it. You by default have the, have the data part. Then you have a left pointer and a right pointer. What is the purpose of these pointers? The right pointer points to the next node and the left pointer points to the previous node. So what is the advantage of this? For every node you can traverse in the forward direction or you can traverse in the reverse direction and hence the name doubly linked list. So now what do you mean by circular list now? As you can see in the diagram, circular lists are very simple. It's a basic doubly linked list but the only difference is that the last node of the doubly linked list points does not point to null instead it points to the first node of the linked list of the w linked list in a similar way the first node of the w linked list points to the last node of the w linked list so in this way you can see that's a loop being formed there is no null pointer over here and this is what we call a circular linked list now what are the advantages of lists single double circular first of all we need to compare linked lists we need to understand why should we use linked lists and not arrays for arrays, when we come to arrays, there are various disadvantages with arrays. First of all, array sizes are dynamic, memory allocation is very difficult, and insertion and deletion from the from the beginning, from the end of the array, or even in between at any particular position, insertion and deletion is quite difficult. So when we look at these descriptions or these advantages of disadvantages of arrays, we can see that these operations are easily performed in linked lists. Like we'll have a look at insertion and deletion, but as you can see, array size, the size of the linked list and the memory allocation is not difficult. Size can be defined at runtime dynamically as in when you create a node, the size of the linked list will keep increasing. You don't need to predefine the size of a linked list unlike an array. Now let us try to understand the insertion description that is how do we create and insert nodes in a linked list. The first step is the first thing what we're going to have a look at is how to insert at the top of the list. Then we look at how to insert at the end of the list and then insertion in the middle or any other part in between the list. So starting with the insertion at the top, it's very simple. The first thing what we need to do is obvious that is we need to create a node which will have two parts, the data and the pointer part. We set the node data values that is what value do we want the node to hold that is defined over here and then we connect the pointers. So since we are inserting at the top, let's have a look at this example which will make it more clear. Suppose say you have this linked list which is already existing wherein this is the head, it is nothing but the starting or the first node of the linked list. You have the tail which is pointing to null or which defines as soon as you find a null pointer for any node, you know that's the end of the linked list. So how do we insert at the top? The first step is simple to create a node. The second step is to set the data value of the node and the third step is to point the point the, is to set the pointer of this newly created node to the head of the existing linked list. So the node with the value 93 
is made to point to this 48 and what you see over here is a link list which is formed after inserting the node with the value 93. Now let us have a look at how we perform insertion at the end of the linked list. It's very similar to the to insertion at the beginning. You first create a node, set the node data value as pre as uh, as we did previously, and then we again connect the pointers. How do we do that? Let us take this example wherein we have an, a linked list which already exists, with this being the head and this being the tail pointing to null. The first step is to create an empty node. The second step set the data value to of the node, and the third step is pointing it, setting it to positioning it to the end of the linked list. How do we do that? Now the tail is pointing to null. What we need to do over here is set this null pointer to point to this newly created node and the pointer of this newly created node should be pointing to null. So once we perform those two operations in the sequence defined, we will get this linked list which will have the newly created node inserted at the end. The third one is inserting at the middle or any position which is not at the top or the end is a little bit more complicated so let us try to understand how that is done. The steps are a little lengthier, over here we create a node and set data value as previous. We need to break the pointer connection and reconnect the pointers. How is that done? Consider a linked list which is already existing, an existing linked list with this as a head and this as a tail. The first and second step is, you all are already aware how it is done, we have, we'll have, we have looked at multiple times. The third step is to break the point, to break the pointer connection at the place you want to insert it. For example, let's say I want to insert it at this position. So what should I do over here? I need to set this pointer to null and the next step, that is this step, I'm setting the pointer with value data, the node with uh, value data, I'm setting it to null. And what do I do with my step 4? I set it, after I set it to null, I set the newly created node to point to the next node and this null pointer will point to this newly created node. So in this way, by following these four simple steps, we have inserted a new newly created node to the middle of the linked list or any position which is not in the head or the bottom. Now the delete description is also very simple. Again there are three parts to it, deleting from the top, end and the middle. So let's have a look at how we delete from the top. The steps are also very straightforward. You have break the pointer connection, reconnect the nodes and the node is deleted. How do we do that? Consider this linked list which is already existing in memory with this being the head and this being the tail. How do we know this is the tail? Because it's pointing to, the, to a null point. It has a null pointer at the end. Now what we need to do over here is in order to delete the first node, the first node in the linked list, we need to have the head pointing to the... All we need to do is set the head to point to the next node in the list, that is the second node. So once the head is set, is reset to point to the second node, this becomes a dangling point, a dangling node. That is, it has, it is, in, it is existing in memory, but it is not accessible anymore. Why? Because the head is no longer pointing to that node, it is pointing to the second node. So once you do that operation, you will have the new link list with the first node deleted. It is not as such deleted, it is still existing in memory. But because now the head is pointing to the second node, that becomes the new head and now it is, a, it is the head of the linked list. 